Hi, right, my name is Dale Updike. I am the new auto tech teacher at Craig Colorado CNCC Auto, auto Department. This presentation today is being given by my first year class. So they've been in auto tech for a couple months since school started this year. So they're going to be the ones giving the presentation. So we'll turn it over to them. Well, I'm Jeremy, first year student. Uh, we're going to be discussing how to check your vehicle over to make sure it's good for winter conditions. Also, we'll be discussing winter tires and installation, which we could do here to save students and teachers some money. Uh, we'll also explain and discuss some different uh, styles of driving for winter conditions. And hopefully, uh, we can save you some money and some time and keep you safe on roads during this winter. Hi, my name is uh, Luciano. Um, we're going to be talking about a vehicle in a checklist. Um, you're going to have to uh, uh, you're going to have to uh, check your windshield uh, washer fluid on uh, for winter. Um, you're going to have to get uh, the uh, icer. Uh, you're going to have to start uh, changing your windshield uh, fluid uh, spicy. Right now, as soon as possible, um, to negative 30 fluid. It fell all the way down to negative 40. Um, you can get it at uh, Walmart, any uh, automotive place. If you don't change it, uh, it can mess up your pump, uh, your line, because it could freeze. Okay. And freezing causes uh, a expand. So if you crack your line, um, mess up a lot of your parts in your vehicle, which costs money. Um, if you guys need help uh, changing it, you guys come down to the school and you can do it for free for you guys. Hi, my name is uh, Gabriel. I'm a first year student from the Alotech program. And I'm going to be talking about the water plates. There are three different types of water plates. Like, these ones are the normal ones, as we can see on the picture. And this is the ones that we want to put on for the winter. And this is a different style, like it makes like a uniform to it. They are kind of new still, so I'm still learning about this kind of play. These two styles of weapon plates are the ones that they're like the good ones for the winter. Because they have like a rubber protection around them that they can protect this metal structure from the from the winter and ice. And that rubber doesn't let them to throw. So if you park your car like in the outsider and you don't have like a garage or kind of of a protective roof for it, you can take like lift up your plate, your white water plates and kind of just like clean the frozen ice that they just form during the night and stuff. And also before you lift them up from the windshield, you can like scrape the ice from it just to help them out so it doesn't like get stuck on the windshield and stuff. And also whenever you're done like taking off the most part of the ice from the rubber plate, you let them, you let them sit on the windshield, but but not carefully because if you let it go on the windshield, it can broke the windshield too and cause more damage in your windshield or in your rubber plate. Also, so I'm Tucker, and we're gonna start talking about tires, and I'm gonna start off with tire pressure. So your tire pressure should be checked at least twice a year, um, once in the fall and once in the spring. And the reason you want to check them twice a year is because in the springtime, your tire pressure goes up because it's warmer outside. And in the wintertime or the fall time, your tire pressure goes down because the air outside is colder. And if you need help checking that or don't have the right equipment to check that, we can check that up here at the school for free. Um, too much pressure in your tires is bad because it makes the tires hard and can end up getting a blowout if tires get hot and if you got too much or too low of pressure 
it's bad because you can risk getting ice in your tire sidewall. And then on your tire sidewall, if you look, you can see um, what your max cold PSI is. And the average car tire is about 35 PSI. Uh, you don't get very much traction if you don't have enough air in your tire because your clearance on the ground isn't good. Okay. Your, your tread face turns up, right? Yeah. And if you have too much, what's it do? It bows it out. Right, it pushes it out so you're riding on the center of the tire. So in the winter, it's really important to have good tire pressure for traction because you need lots of traction in the winter. Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm a first year student here at the Automotive Technology Program here at CNCC. And uh, several years ago, I moved here to the high country from Florida. So I understand um, the difficulties of driving in cold, snowy, and icy conditions. Um, and we've covered a lot of uh, driving skills and maintenance and stuff. Um, and all this stuff can be pretty scary. Uh, but a rule of thumb is don't be scared, be prepared. So um, with that, I'm going to discuss some things that you should store in your vehicle during the wintertime. For instance, you have an engine failure and you can't run the engine and you can't run the heat. You're going to need um, some good warm blankets. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a large comforter from the thrift store or if you want to you know, go a little bit further, you could get a heavy duty sleeping bag, one or two. Another essential thing to have is uh, heavy duty um, and insulated waterproof gloves so that, that you have, if you have to get out of the car and you have to maybe dig out some snow or whatever, um, that's going to be a good thing to have. Also, um, to stay warm, you would need a, a good stocking hat. And this thing is really well insulated. Another really important thing that I want to point out was uh, keeping a small, either foldable shovel in your car. In the event that you are able to run your engine and you're using your engine for heat, you want to get out of the vehicle and make sure that the tailpipe and exhaust system is all not blocked with snow and that there's plenty of room for the exhaust to escape and not go under the vehicle and seep into the wheel wells or through the door wells and other areas. Because that can cause um, carbon, monoxide. carbon monoxide poisoning. We all know the dangers of that. Um, finally, another real essential item that you want to have is um, they call them uh, a blinking beacon light. And you can have several of them in your vehicle battery operated, um, usually LED, and they blink fast so that it alerts other motorists, especially at night, that you're broken down and that you need assistance. Um, also, if you're going fast and you end up sliding off the road into a snowbank that is off in the distance or lower than where the traffic is, um, it will. you can sit on the side of the road and it will signal to drivers that there is someone stranded, but you're out of sight. So. That's definitely a must have. They look some, similar to this, all different kinds of varieties. You can get them at Walmart. Um, another couple of things I like to keep in my car is water. Obviously, it's more difficult in the winter, but dry food, just a little bit, you know, to get you through. Um, so, if you're prepared, uh, you know, you may not ever need these items, but it's always good to be prepared and then be sorry you weren't. I'm JJ, I'm a first year automotive student here at CNCC. You to talk about winter tires. Studded snow tires are probably the best choice for new winter drivers because they have little metal studs that provide better traction on ice by dripping into them. Alternatively, there are also good all season tires which provide relatively good traction all year round. Although, studded tires are probably the best choice for new drivers because of the extra control they provide. Snow tires can either be purchased online or from several local local tire shops. Snow tires are also illegal during summer months because they damage the road surface. Also, by the time winter comes back around, the road surface, the asphalt and stuff, has caused all the metal spikes to wear down so much that they no longer provide any traction. In many states, there's also a minimum tread depth regulation of four to five millimeters. If your vehicle is involved in an accident, you could be fined if your tire tread depth is lower than regulation. Well, my name is Ray and I'm from around Craig and the driving in the winter 
is a lot different than driving in the summer because you just have to be, you got to be more cautious and more aware of you and your vehicle. And a lot of times you have to be more aware of the other drivers, but you just got to got to have more distance between you and the people you're following it because everything is a lot slower. Like you can't make a lot of the just random sudden movements like you can in the summertime. And like you can't, you can't just slam on your brakes. You can't, or like taking off on a stoplight, you don't just want to gas it. So you just gotta go slower and take your time with it. And you, Usually the rule of thumb in the winter is it's about 10, the uh, distance is about 10 times longer just because there is that, just that added time where you have to uh, start slowing down from farther away just because it does take longer. Say you're going out of town and going on the, or like driving from here to Hayden or Steamo, one of the biggest things in the winter is you do not want to use traction control or cruise control, <laughs> not traction, <laughs> wrong one. You don't want to use cruise control because with the snow and the ice and all that on the road, your car will try and slow down, but because the settings are set to that certain amount of speed, it'll try and spin your tires faster so that it'll maintain that speed and you'll end up crashing and spinning out because it's the car is trying to counteract itself and you don't want to do that so you just you'll end up going into a ditch or off the side of the road or in a car and you just got to be safe and cautious so you get because it is so much colder at night and earlier in the mornings like like dawn i guess uh you have a lot more black eyes because everything is just because of how cold it gets it's just completely frozen and the black ice is more is a way more dangerous because you can't see it. Hence why it's called black ice. And so you just gotta be this one is recommended if you're traveling, do it during the day and be careful. Okay, so that's our presentation. We wanna thank you for for those that watch it. We wanna thank you for watching it. We hope it helps you get you through the winter. If you have any questions, you can sure come talk to us. We can give you more help and more answers. If you have any questions, get a hold of us. We're either in the classroom here or out in the shop. If you see us out in the shop, stop by and ask. If you need help airing up your tires and your windshield washer fluid, any of that stuff, come and see us down in the shop. We're out there quite a bit. We're definitely out there every Friday. So come by and see us. We'll sure help you. Well, thanks for watching our presentation. I hope it helped. And, uh, Here's some information. Um, here's my number, 824-1108. That rings in my office. If I do not answer, leave a message. I also have a CNCC email. Just like everybody else, it's my name, dale.updike at cncc.edu. If you're a student or a teacher, you can email me. We can set up something. We can sure help take care of your vehicle on, on many things, plus the winter stuff.